That's all right. It's better than me. So, but welcome. Um, a special welcome. If you're visiting with us today, we are so happy that you're here. Um, and I, you know, there's a thing um, that Warren did on this um, little word cloud that maybe some of you saw online. And it says that um, one of the things that people wanted to stop is Steve saying the same thing every week. Well, I understand that, but I'm talking to the visitors. They haven't heard it before. So I'm going to say it again um, if you are visiting with us. Thank you so much for coming. It is truly a blessing um, for us that you are here today. And if you are visiting with us for the first time, if you would just take a second, there's, in the pew rack right in front of you, there's a little yellow card um, with a visitor's information. And if you could just fill that out, drop in the plate when it comes by. We're not going to come knock on your door. We're not going to bother you. We'll just send you a nice little letter. Um, well, I think it's nice. I wrote it. Um, <laughs> thanking you for coming. And, um, but we do appreciate it. And again, more importantly than the paperwork, if you are visiting with us, please take a minute after the service. Have a cup of coffee with us out in the fellowship hall. We would love to get to know you a little bit better. Um, I do have a few announcements. Very few. You're welcome. Um, first of all, Today is Disability Awareness Sunday, so we're going to be talking a little bit more about that. You've seen some things on the screen up there, um, so we will be looking further into that. So we also, I want to mention the Bible studies that have started, they started last week with just an introduction, so we're really just now getting into the meat and potatoes of the study. So if you were not here last week, you can still come. Uh, we have one Monday at noon, that's a ladies only study. We have 6.30 on Monday. 3 o'clock on Wednesday and 6.30 on Wednesday. And we are doing the um, study on Isaiah. It is the Epic of Eden series by Sandra Richter, and you are more than welcome. I also want to remind you that um, Financial Peace University did just kick off last week. Um, there is plenty of room. If you have someone interested, it's not too late. I want to also mention that um, you can come this week, no obligation for free, Wednesday at 6.30. Um, and if you just want to check it out, you're more than welcome. And if you are a graduate of Financial Peace University, um, you can come to any session and um, for free, just as part of your original commitment to the Ramsey program. So we have a list um, in the bulletin of what the classes are, the topics are, and if you come to me, I can tell you when that will um, meet between now and the 13th of November. That's all I have for announcements, so why don't we take a few minutes and prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to our prelude. Thanks, folks.
please stand and join me in the call to worship? We gather here in anticipation. Seeking an encounter with our holy God. Who comes among us when we least expect it. Who invites us to wrestle with our questions and doubts. Who richly blesses us. And calls us each by name. Let's all worship God together. We'll now have a hymn. pray with me. Lord, we come today to hear the story of Jacob as he wrestles with the angel, how he asks for the angel to bless him. We too come to you for blessing. There are so many times in our lives in which we have felt alienated, downtrodden, alone. It is easy for us to wallow in our misery, to whine about the perceived injustices that have been heaped upon us. But you encourage us to stand strong, to seek the blessings that you have provided for us, to recognize the many ways that you are with us, giving us strength and courage. Be with us again, precious Lord. Guide our lives as we have brought our prayers before you for those near and dear to us, seeking healing and hope for them. Let us also remember that those same mercies are lavished upon us, not because we deserve them, but because of your great and generous love for us. Help us receive these blessings 
can in turn be blessings to someone else. For we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
God creates family. Our families, whatever they may look like, provide the love and nurture we need. Even when our families fail to give us love, God is always there as our loving parent. Two weeks ago, we read in Genesis chapter 2 how God created the first family to work together to do God's work. Last week, Miss Alice shared with us the story from the Genesis chapters 18 and 21 of when God gave an elderly couple the impossible promise of a baby boy. God kept that promise with the birth of Isaac, whose name means laughter. This week, we learned that Isaac's son, Jacob, wrestled all night with a stranger. Jacob was blessed and given the name his descendants would claim for all generations, Israel. These are the words from Genesis 32, chapters 9 through 13 and 22 through 30. Then Jacob prayed, O God of my father Abraham, God of my father Isaac, Lord, you who said to me, go back to your country and your relatives, and I will make you prosper. I am unworthy of all the kindness and faithfulness you have shown your servant. I had only my staff when I crossed this Jordan, but now I have become two camps. Save me, I pray, from the hand of my brother Esau, for I am afraid he will come and attack me, and also the mothers with their children. But you have said, I will surely make you prosper and make your descendants like the sands of the sea, which cannot be counted. He spent the night there, and from what he had with him, he selected a gift for his brother Esau. That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, his eleven sons, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. For he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all of his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip, so his hip was wrenched, and as he wrestled with him, the man said, Let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, What is your name? Jacob answered. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with the humans and have overcome. Jacob said, Please tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask my name? Then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Penei, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be pleasing to you, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. What do you really need from God right now? How badly do you need God's blessing in your life right now? And how badly do you want it? Now, I'm not talking about the prosperity gospel that you might see on television before coming to church on Sunday mornings. I don't hold that financial blessing or fiscal well-being are always the will of God for our lives, or that positive self-talk and donations to your favorite charitable cause will increase your material wealth. I'm saying that there are times when God only releases blessing on us after a season of prolonged, maybe even painful, wrestling. Rick read from Genesis chapter 32 this morning about how Jacob was on his way back home to Canaan with a small tribe after a 20-year, mostly self-imposed exile. He was scared to death because his estranged brother Esau 
The brother who he deceived all those years ago was coming to meet him and bringing 400 of his friends with him. This was not a welcome home party. This was an avenging army that was on its way. So after splitting up his household into two camps, you heard Rick read that, to try to avoid complete annihilation of his family, Jacob, understandably, suffering from insomnia, intends to spend the night alone, no doubt in prayer, maybe just for his life. But then a stranger shows up and rudely interrupts that plan even and wrestles with Jacob until daybreak. And at some point in this weird wrestling match, Jacob realizes he's wrestling with God himself. When God decides it's time to end the match, he dislocates Jacob's hip and demands to be released. But Jacob, even in significant pain, says, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. Now, this is the guy who stole his brother's blessing 20 years ago. Stole it. Now he's wrestled all night and says, I'm not letting go until you bless me. And in some weird way, this response seems to please God, who pronounces a blessing on Jacob and says, your name shall no longer be Jacob, which means deceiver, but Israel wrestles with God. For you have wrestled with God and with men, and you have prevailed. And so then Jacob limps to his tense reunion with Esau with a weaker body, but a stronger faith. Jacob has wrestled with God, and now he knows his prayers regarding Esau are going to be answered. Isn't it strange in life that sometimes we receive blessing through wrestling? Take note of what God did when he wrestled Jacob. Jacob began the night dreading Esau's arrival. He was full of fear and desperation, but when he ended the night of struggle with God's blessing, he had a renewed faith. So this weird thing that we learn is that all of our wrestling with God in the end leads to peace. It seems counterintuitive, doesn't it? All of our struggling with God in faith leads to peace. And if you remember, God in a previous chapter in Genesis had spoken to Jacob in a dream or vision. So why didn't he do that here? He could have given him Jacob's ladder to go up and down into heaven. He could have reiterated his promise and spoken comforting words. But this time, God addressed Jacob's fear by requiring him to wrestle all night long. Have you ever had that when you just really want, need a good night's sleep? But instead, you're up all night? I remember when I felt called to ministry that I was going through the process that our denomination has with a mentor. But I couldn't seem to get the meetings with my mentor put together to finish this process. And I find myself in my journal writing about my frustration of not being able to complete this process, that no one seemed to care about it as much as I did. And so I finally one night in desperation and prayer at bedtime said to God, I've lost my thirst for this. If you want me to go into ministry, you must give me a thirst for this again. Friends, be careful what you pray for. <laughs> I spent all night up thirsty. I must have had two gallons of water during the night. And I couldn't sleep, and I would have this, I would have this fitful sleep after I got up and drank a lot of water, thirsty, I'd try to go back to sleep, and I would have these weird dreams and in these dreams, I would actually see scripture text in the dreams. So not the whole text, just the reference, right? It's just strange dreams. And I'd try to go back to sleep, and I was thirsty again. I would get up and drink more water, try to lay back down, see another scripture reference in my mind. I finally, about five in the clock in the morning, just gave up. I was like, oh, okay. What is this about? And I took my Bible and I went into our bathroom and closed the door and put the lid down on the toilet and sat down and started looking up all these scripture references. 
And every reference was some story of God calling someone to do what God had for them to do. Be careful what you pray. Give me a thirst for this? That was dumb. (laughs) But here's the thing that I learned reading Jacob's story. If necessary, God will give you a limp to get you walking in the direction that God wants you to go. We want to run before we walk. Well, God will slow you down if that's what's necessary. God even afflicted Jacob with a debilitating injury. The guy walked around with a limp the rest of his life. It had the effect of making Jacob even more vulnerable to Esau, who he was going to meet. Think about that. He's scared about going to meet Esau, and God's solution to that is to wound him to give him an injury where he can barely walk to this meeting. So now he really must trust in God and not himself, right? Now he knows it is God who must protect him because he cannot do it for himself. He's worn out and he's hurt. If necessary, God will cause you to limp to increase your faith. I have a friend in South Louisiana who was a member of ours at Grace Community Church in Shreveport. A guy named Shane Sumlin. I never really liked Shane when I first met him. He was pretty. You know the kind I'm talking about, right? Like Kevin Herman, you know. <laughs> that perfect smile and their hair is always perfect. They've got a tan even in the winter. You know the type I'm talking about, right? They wear, they wear women's jeans, make you want to ask, you know, they sell men's clothes where you got that. You know the type I'm talking about, right? <clears throat> Shane had everything going for him. He had married his college sweetheart, the most beautiful girl you've ever seen, Christy. They had the two prettiest kids you've ever seen, Maggie and Cash, right? He was a financial planner. Everything was coming up roses for Shane. And then I got a call from the senior pastor. Go to Willis Knighton Hospital and see Shane. And I got to Willis Knighton Hospital and I walked into the room and this friend of mine, Shane, was laying in a hospital bed. And I said, what's going on, buddy? I can't walk, preacher. I woke up this morning laying next to the bed and I couldn't get back in the bed and I couldn't get up. What are the doctors telling you? They ran a bunch of tests and they say I have Guillain-Barre syndrome. Here's the funny thing. A couple years before that, Annalisa had Guillain-Barre syndrome. So I knew what he was dealing with. If you don't know about Guillain-Barre, it's a rare neurological disorder. It affects your body's immune system. It decides that when you get some virus introduced into your body, that your central nervous system is the virus. And it attacks all the nerves that are located outside your brain and spinal cord, and, and it causes ascending paralysis. Starts in your toes and starts working its way up, paralyzing you. And so here was my friend Shane in a hospital bed, unable to walk. And I knew what would come next. Not being able to swallow, not being able to breathe properly. They make you see every doctor with an ologist at the back of their name, you know. Pulmonologist, cardiologist, urologist, you see them all, right? But here's the thing I'll never forget as I'm sitting on the edge of Shane's bed thinking that I'm there to comfort him Shane turned his head and looked at me and he said you know Warren I was blessed before GBS I'll be blessed after GBS and I'm being blessed by GBS Now, he said this laying flat on his back in a hospital bed, unable to move anything from the waist down. 
So I think about the things that I whine and cry about. Things that cause me pain and suffering, right? Past injuries, surgeries, back problems, migraines, arthritis, infection, fibromyalgia. Maybe you know some of these too. And it's not just physical, is it? The other things that cause us pain and suffering might be unemployment, financial problems, feelings of failure, divorce, estranged relationships with some family member. Have you got in mind the thing that gives you pain and suffering? So say this with me. I was blessed before this. I will be blessed after this. And the hard one. I am being blessed by this. this. Guillain-Barre syndrome changed Shane's identity. See, Shane used to work out all the time. But here's the funny thing. Shane worked out with a group of us guys that... um, there's some guys like Chris Williams and Sione Tuta that were these big muscular guys. They looked like they were on steroids and they weren't, but they just, they, they packed on muscle so easily, right? And Shane was always kind of the beanpole guy in the group. He ate everything he could get his hands on. He lifted weights all the time and he still was just skinny. He was the weak guy in the group. But GBS changed Shane. It didn't mean that he packed on muscle. But through prayer and through physical therapy, Shane went from being the weak guy in the group to clearly being the strong one. The one that the others leaned on. He went from being the guy who worried about was his hair just right, did his clothes impress, to somebody who advocates and even cheers for other people who are struggling Shane actually refers to himself now as a wounded healer. That's an archetype of Carl Jung's, for those of you who don't know. Or he might have read the book by Henry Nouwen about a wounded healer, but Shane claims this as his identity. Wounded healer. Shane still has the visible effects of GBS. It affects his gait, the way he walks. He has other problems that you can't see, but there are, there are physical effects that are obvious from GBS, but Shane will tell you that they're not defects, but blessings, because they're opportunities to share his story with other people, about how God blessed him before GBS, after GBS, and even blessed him through this GBS. Wrestling with God changed Shane's identity from weak to strong, from a healthy pretty boy to a wounded healer. Just like wrestling with God changed Jacob's identity. He went from being the guy who deceived his brother and stole his blessing to being Israel. Israel. We know who the Israelites are, right? God's chosen people. He received God's blessing by prevailing in faith. His tenacious faith was rewarded. When we wrestle with God, there's often more going on than we first understand. God always uses this wrestling to transform us because God wants to bless us. We don't always believe that, do we? But I am speaking into you. God wants to bless you. God's not reluctant to bless us, even if that's how it feels. It's just that God has more blessings for us in the wrestling than without it. Remember, God pursued Jacob for this match. Jacob didn't put this date on his calendar. God pursued him. God was the the initiator. Jacob was stewing in anxiety. God was bringing blessing. Wrestling was a means of God's grace, a channel of God's blessing on Jacob. And the same is true for us. So keep wrestling. What do you really need from God right now? I'll ask you again. How badly do you want it? Do not let go until God blesses you. 
But understand that God will meet you in your fear, in your anguish, your anxiety, your pain, your suffering, but may not meet you in the way that you expect or desire. Your greatest ally may show up at first looking like your adversary. Remember the story of Jacob. There are multiple blessings in the wrestling. We want soft words of comfort, but that may not be what we need. We might want to be left alone with our thoughts, and that may not be what we need. We may just want a good night's sleep, and that may just not be in the cards. You might not even need a healthy hip. What you need most is the blessing of a real relationship with God. Not a veneer, surface, looks good on Sunday kind of relationship, right? But the stuff that's been worked out in deep faith through real hard times, that's real relationship. That's what happens like in marriage, right? Marriages grow stronger, not when everything's going great, but when things are tough. That's the way relationships work. And God wants to give you a new identity. Christian, like Christ. But the problem is Philippians 3.10 says, if we're determined to be transformed into the likeness of Christ, we have to share in his suffering. I want to be transformed by the love of Jesus Christ. And I want to be transformed into the image of Jesus Christ. But I'm honest, I don't want to suffer. But scripture tells us that's part of the deal. When God calls you to wrestle with a sleepless night spent in prayer, it's an invitation to God's blessings. So hang in there. Don't give up. God loves to bless people with tenacious faith. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord, every good and perfect gift is a blessing from you, and you have blessed us with so much. We ask that you would use us to be a blessing to others who are in need or facing difficulties. Make us a channel of your blessing, a channel through who your love and peace and joy and love flow out from you through us to others. May we be your hands to bless others. May you guide our feet to places where we can go and be a blessing. May our speech be such that we speak words of comfort and encouragement and speak the truth in love. Give us the grace to be available when others are in need. O oh Lord, that you may increase in our lives and that we may decrease so that the blessings that you pour through us to others may draw each one closer into the arms of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name I pray. Amen. If you would like to read the Apostles' Creed, uh, it would be on page 7 in the hymnal. Is it coming on the screen? Okay. <laughs> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his holy Son. I was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day he rose from the dead. 
He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge us, the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may now be seated. We are blessed. We are a family, a family of God.